There we go. Okay, they're silenced. There we go. Okay, we got them down. Open before that runs out. Okay, there we go. Run, run, run. Use our agility. Use our speed. Oh, we've run out of charge. Oh, this is going to be close. Ladies and gentlemen, every Morrowind player knows that 95% of a build's power comes from the name. And of course, since we're making a Nightblade assassin style character, well, then we, of course, have to reach back into the plethora of popular culture surrounding this kind of character, the assassin archetype. People like Agent 47, Ezio, Altair, we're, we're swarmed with assassins and we don't even know it. But I'm not going to go with any of those amateur hour losers. No, I'm going to name this character Kevin James, the hit star of the straight-to-Netflix original movie True Memoirs of an International Assassin. Because, well, by the end of this video, when the guards are asking you if you know anything about the disappearances across Vardenfell, well, you'll just be giving them one of these, eh? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I, I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> no, Black Hand Dagger, I don't... never heard of it. Rag Tong, is that, is that the local bridge club? No, sorry, sorry, I'm sorry, I got nothing for you. Now, to start with character creation, I would just like to say a little bit about what I'm going for with this build, because a Nightblade could mean different things to different people. But to me, I actually think that the Oblivion class description captured exactly what I'm going for. Spell and Shadow are their friends. By darkness, they move with haste, casting magic to benefit their circumstances. And I think that is exactly what we will be going for today. An assassin style character using bows and short blades backed up by their magical abilities to help them debuff their opponents and get out of a tight spot. So when looking at our races here, what is the right way to go for that kind of character? Well, whenever we're talking about a hybrid spellcaster, well, the first and most obvious choice is going to be a dark elf. As you can see here, on their skill bonuses, they have athletics boost of 5, destruction of 10, which is very important for a Nightblade style character in my mind. Not only does it give us a little bit of additional range damage, but it also is where the damage attribute effects live, which are some of the most powerful debuffs in the entire game. Talk about, you know, greater bone walkers sapping everybody's strength. You know how bad that is when it happens to you. It is just as debilitating when you cast it on some NPCs as well. Continuing down the list, we have Light Armor, of course, right in Flavortown for our Nightblade, along with a Longblade of 5, Marksman of 5, Mysticism of 5, another class that is great for those magical debuffs that we'll talk a little bit more about later, and a bonus of plus 10 to Short Blade. So you can see from the skill bonuses, a Dark Elf is pretty much meant to be an assassin. I guess it kind of makes sense why the Mirag Tong started out in Vardenfell after all, if they're all set up like this to begin with. I mean, they almost have an innate ability for murdering people in the shadows with magic and swords and daggers and all that fun stuff. Now, additionally, they also have in their specials Ancestor Guardian, which is a sanctuary 50 points for 60 seconds on self. And sanctuary is awesome on this style of character because you're going to be wearing light armor. You're not going to have a really high endurance, going to have low health. So having a 50 point sanctuary is going to make you that much harder to hit. Great to have. And then they also get a little 75% resist fire, which is great if you run into flame atronox. And of course, fire damage from spells is one of the most common damage types in the games. You just find it all over the place. So if you're going for that traditional 50-50 spell versus physical damage build of a Nightblade, well, the Dark Elf is an incredibly great choice that I can't recommend enough. Now, if you're more of a stealth archer, so to speak, you want to pull out a little bit of that Skyrim skill set that you had from, you know, playing it the last 10 years, well, then the obvious choice is going to be a Wood Elf, as they also make a great assassin-style character, nimble and light, high agility, and we'll take a quick look at the skill bonuses here. Acrobatics of 5, plus 5 to Alchemy, which, again, that's in theme, in flavor for a Nightblade, making some poisons, making some potions, totally on character, along with the boost of 10 to Light Armor, 15 to Marksman, 10 to Sneak. Now, the thing that you will see here with the Wood Elf you don't get any immediate boost to any of your magical abilities outside of alchemy, but you know I'm not really counting that as magic. It's its own kind of practice over there. But again, if you're going for more of that ranged damage, that bow and arrow user that just happens to use a little bit of magic, if that's your style of assassin, well, then go ahead and take the Night Elf here. 
We'll also take a look quickly at their specials. Resist disease of 75%, nothing to write home about, and Beast Tongue, which allows Command Creature 5 levels for 600 seconds on target, which is actually a pretty strong little spell there. Now, for the sake of this build, I'm going to go the more spell route. You know, that 50-50 turning invisible and then stabbing people as I'm invisible kind of build. So I will be taking the Dark Elf for Kevin freaking James. And now, we'll hop into our skills. Now to start creating our Nightblade custom class, you have a two roads to go down when picking your specialization. If you're going for more of that physical damage build, again, using bows and arrows, using short blades, trying to not really use magic just, just for situational purposes or for debuff purposes, you may want to take your specialization here as stealth. As you can see, stealth buffs all those super sneaky stats, well as those supporting weapon types for a more stealth-focused character. Things like security, sneak, acrobatics, light armor, short blade, marksman, the list goes on. And when you're selecting your specialization here, what this is gonna do is give you a plus five boost at the beginning of the game to each of those skills. If you're going for more of that magical style Nightblade, more of that arcane trickster build, well, then you will probably want to take magic. If you wanna lean on destruction as more of a primary range damage source, this is gonna help you out in the early game instead of, you know, throwing that stuff into marksmen and using a bow and arrow if you're never gonna pull it out of your backpack. And then additionally, getting a nice boost to things like alteration and illusion, going to be very, very helpful when breaking and entering, and of course, leaving afterwards with things like chameleon and invisibility. So there's really not a right or wrong answer here. It all comes down to how you want to play your own character. I want to play a little bit more of that physical damage build, so I am gonna take stealth here. And then going down to my favorite attributes, I will be taking first, agility, and second, willpower. Reflecting that kind of 50-50 split between the physical and the magical. The agility, of course, is going to help us stay nice and nimble, stay out of sight when we're sneaking around, but also it will help us land all of our hits, which is incredibly important when you're using a bow and arrow because every single one of those arrows, well, that's sweet, sweet money going out of your pocket. And if you start firing things like ebony arrows, daedric arrows, well, you do not want those things to miss. And then willpower down here, of course, going to help us with casting all of our spells. Now moving on to our major skills, again, this may vary a little bit, but I'm going for that kind of more physical focus, but really 50-50, more traditional night blade split. So I will start here by taking short blade. Short blade's of course the most flavorful option for a sneaky in the shadows assassin character, and I will be showing you how to get a very nice one to support your early game here in just a moment. Moving down, we'll be selecting light armor. After that, I will be taking marksman. Again, I'm going to be focused more on that bow and arrow build, leaning less on destruction for the range damage. So in my head, that's just what a night blade means to me. So that's how I'm going to play it here. You could take destruction here as an alternative instead of taking it as a minor skill, but we'll, we'll get into that in just a second. After Marksman, I will be taking Illusion. Illusion, of course, is going to be one of the most helpful buff classes for our character in enabling us to be nice and quick and sneaky. Now, for our finer major skill, I will take Sneak. Of course, Sneak, the discipline of the art of moving unseen and unheard, is exactly what we want to be doing when we are a Nightblade character. Now, moving on to minor skills, this is where things get nice and flexible. So as I always say, be sure to make this character your own. I'm not telling you this is the only way to do it. I'm just simply giving you a template that may help inspire you and get you back into Morrowind one more time because that's what we're all trying to do here at the end of the day. But for minor skills, I'll first be taking Destruction. Next, I'll be taking Acrobatics. Again, just nice and flavorful. I'm a flavor kind of player. Next, I'll be taking Mysticism. And mysticism, as you can see here, gives us the telekinesis effect. And then it also has absorb and reflect effects, which are incredibly powerful. Absorb health is one of the most powerful damaging spells in the entire game because it cannot hurt you when it's reflected back on you. Moving down, I will be taking athletics. And this is mainly just to help with leveling. I want to be able to get plus five bonuses on my speed skill because speed is very very important on a sneaky squishy style character so having athletics kind of leveling in the background turboing up our leveling experience and giving us an easier plus five modifier for that attribute on each of our level ups going to be very helpful because the things that i'm trying to take whenever i'm leveling up agility 
speed, and then probably either intelligence or willpower, something related to spellcasting to help us continue to, you know, amplify that aspect of our character as well. Now for our final minor skill, I will be taking alteration, of course, aiding us with the levitation, with the lock picking, with all the traversal and fun stuff that comes along with being an assassin and doing so in a magical way. Perfectly flavorful, perfectly on par with what we'd expect from a Nightblade character. Now, moving on to the birth sign, Again, this does kind of determine how you want to play your Nightblade character. If you're going really heavy on the physical side, I would likely recommend the Lover here, getting that plus 25 boost star agility right at the early game, and then also getting a nice Paralyze for 60 seconds. But if you're going for more of that magical style character, well, then I would recommend the Atronach or the Apprentice. Now, personally, if I was playing that more mage-style Nightblade, I'd probably go for the Atronach here because I think the Apprentice is almost too magey. Again, I'm a flavor kind of guy, and then the Atronach to me just seems more like assassiny. like maybe I'm not innately magical, I have to work my way around it. So the womb burn with the stunted magicka there and or having to steal the magic from my opponents via the spell absorption, that's just super flavorful for a Nightblade style character. But I know a lot of people don't really like playing with the Atronach, so getting that 1.5x boost to your magicka pool with the Apprentice is still going to be incredibly helpful. Now, since I mentioned earlier in the video that I'm going for that more balanced character play style, not leaning 100% on the magic, I am going to take the lover here, take that additional agility, really going to help with our marksmanship early in the game, and now we'll take a look at what our build looks like. So here we have it, Kevin James, the Dark Elf Maul Assassin, born under the sign of the Lover with an agility of 75 points and a short blade of 45, marksman of 40. A great way to start off our path towards total assassination and Nightblade witchery that will begin now that we are done with all of our selections and numbers and all that fun stuff. So let's hop into the game and get underway. All right, ladies and gentlemen, now once you've stolen that poor old man's dinner right off his table that he was really looking forward to eating after getting off his long day of freaking work, well, you're going to head over to a Reels trade house. Yes, I, I have learned how to say his name. See, we're getting better all the time, people. That's what life's all about, learning new things, trying new things, and today you're going to learn how to be a freaking professional assassin. So like I said, let's sell everything that we had gotten our hands on in the freaking census and excise office. I don't want to keep anything on me except for a dagger, and that gets us to 343 gold to start with. Now, one thing you are going to want to do here before you leave the trade house is actually pick up just a couple spells, because when you start with destruction as a major skill, you do get firebite as one of your starter spells. But since we will be killing some Dark Brotherhood agents later, and they are all Dunmers, and Dunmers are 75% resistance to fire, well, we want some other damage here to start the game. So let's go ahead and pick up Spark from Ariel. And if you're feeling jovial, you can also go ahead and pick up Father's Hand as Sanctuary is an effect that you will want to have on your squishy, agile Nightblade character. But once you've finished bartering up with our good friend, the Altmer over there, well, we of course want to head to our favorite place in the entire game. And ladies and gentlemen, that is Balmora. I mean, this is the Balmora channel after all. We had to go there eventually. And I will catch up with you at the Balmora Mages Guild. So here we are in our beautiful Ashlander paradise of Balmora at the local Mages Guild. And like I said, a Nightblade is part spellcaster and part assassin. So for the spellcaster part of the build, we will of course want to join the Mages Guild, sign the old oath over there. And then once we've accepted our magical corporate overlords terms of service, well, we need to head downstairs and we are actually going to do, like I mentioned earlier, alluded to earlier, a Dark Brotherhood expert. And we're actually going to do it twice. We want to get attacked for the first time in order to get the Dark Brotherhood armor, which is, of course, some wonderful assassin starting armor for our light armored Nightblade character. Now, the second time that we're going to want to do it is actually for the armor again, but we'll want to barter it over to the creeper and then go on a bit of a spell buying spree. So let's go ahead and start hop into bed, close our eyes and see how long it takes for them to attack us. All right. One rest, two rest, 
three rests. Oh, they're feeling scared today. <laughs> the word, the word has gotten around. They know I'm recording. That's why. All right. Four rests, five rests. Oh, there we go. Okay. I was like, if they go take us to double digits, something is very wrong, but that does not seem to be the case. So what we're going to do, blast them away. As you can see, this is doing way, way more damage than fire bite. And there you go. Three casts. He's already on the ground. So, like I mentioned, let's go ahead, take all, and here we go, ladies and gentlemen. A fantastic set of light armor and perfectly on theme for our Nightblade character. So there you have it, all in. Our assassin already suited up here at the beginning of the game, ready to kick some ass. And of course, if you don't want to jump towards late game armor, keeping in mind the Dark Brotherhood line armor set does all have a base armor rating of 30, which puts it right about, you know, 60, 70% of glass. So not the strongest in the game, but certainly not you know, maybe necessarily something your level one character should have, but hey, this is Morrowind. This is what this game's about, and nothing is more on theme than this. But like I said, if you don't want to rush here, then go to the trader outside. There is a full set of chitin armor for you to buy, like I showed in our spell sword video. But with our armor sorted and out of the way, we of course, like I mentioned, want to do this again because being a spellcaster is very, very expensive at the start when you're trying to make your own custom spells. So let's rest until healed and do it again. Okay, that that's eight, that's eight rests in a row, okay. Uh, nine? Oh my god, are we gonna hit the dreaded double digits? Maybe word is spreading about us now. Okay, that's ten rests. Eleven! Okay, whoa, well, there we go. Okay, finally, I think that was like fifteen rests. That was insane. They've never taken that long. Well, too bad for you. It doesn't matter how long it takes. It just matters that you're here, and because you're here, well, you're gonna die. So, <laughs> that is a lockpick. Uh, let's not do that. All right, here's a silver dagger to the face. Couple of these, couple of those. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Another one bites the freaking dust. So you call yourself a freaking assassin, sir. He clearly wasn't following this build because he does not stand toe to toe with the likes of Kevin James, the strongest assassin to ever live. But like I mentioned, we want to go take this armor so that we can go on our buying spree of spells. So let's head over to Caldera. And once we are in Caldera, we want to make our way over to Gorak Manor to see our old buddy Barbus. Yeah, fun fact. In case you didn't know, the creeper is Barbus. And yes, I mean the dog from Skyrim and Daggerfall. How crazy is that? <laughs> what a wild thing Elder Scrolls lore is. But here we are at the creeper. Let's go ahead and barter here ditch all of our Dark Brotherhood armor because, you know, we don't need two sets of it. And we'll even cut the creeper a deal for 5,000 flat for being such a cool guy to hang out with. I mean, all those extra beers over the years, we probably owe him 157 gold. So I'll click off her here, 5,000 gold into the inventory. And then before we leave Caldera, like I mentioned at the beginning of this build, a great alternate damage source for a Nightblade character. And again, sticking on theme with the role play of being an assassin, sticking in the shadows, is going to be marksman and one of the easiest to reach restocking merchants for decent arrows in the game is hlodless mod the armorer here in caldera right next to gorak manor so let's pop inside speak to the old nord over here and then you can see when we open up his inventory he will have 50 silver arrows here that he will restock so we can buy this whole stack of silver arrows for 173 gold offer open up our barter again and there you have it another 50 silver arrows for you to burn through as you level all of your enemies and seal your assassin's writs for the Morag tongue having restocking merchants for all of the critical items that you need in a run things like exclusive restore health potions arrows if you're going to be a marksman style character places to get uh, you know fortify willpower potions if you're a mage all these things really do matter and knowing where all of them are will make every single one of your Morrowind runs that much easier. So always be on the lookout for a good restocking merchant and when you find them, be sure to keep them in mind. 
All right, now that we have our arrows and gold sorted, like I mentioned, let's go ahead and start buying some of these assassin spells that we will need. Now, if you've ever played any assassin style video game, thinking, you know, the Thief series, Hitman series, one of the things that's incredibly important to being an assassin is being mobile, because if you're not mobile, then you can't reach your targets. And if you can't reach your targets, well, I hate to break it to you, you're not killing anybody. So the first person we're gonna talk to is our beloved Dark Elf, and I would like to pick up Water Walking as well as an open spell, just to make sure, again, that we can always reach everybody that we want. We'll also want to grab Levitate for a similar theme, reach up in any balconies, any higher buildings that someone may be on. And I'm even going to pick up Water Breathing just because I love the flavor of this spell. And you know, what more James Bondy thing is there than scuba diving to your enemy underneath the waves? I can't think of anything cooler than that. Now, the second person we're going to talk to is Astir Dalin over here. And we are going to grab First, the Fuddle spell. Now you will see that this is a spell for damage attribute intelligence, but the good thing about damaging attribute is that no matter what the first spell that you buy of this is, you unlock all the other attributes. So I am buying the damage attribute intelligence, but in just a second, I will be able to spell make a damage attribute strength spell and do my best greater bone walker impersonation, sticking to the theme of using magical debuffs on our enemies and then, you know, stabbing them in the throat with a super cool, awesome knife. So damage attribute, definitely gotta have it. The second thing I think is just super flavorful is poison because every assassin needs some poison on them. And like I mentioned, before we leave this barter menu, we are gonna spell make just a couple things. The first being our own version of a dread curse. So I'm gonna leave this range on touch. I'm gonna make it nice and easy here. Again, we are early in the game. This isn't a fully mage character. You're not gonna cast all the amazing spells that you want to right at the start, but use these as some you know, templates, some things to get you started and expand from there. So here we have damage, attribute, strength, on touch, 415. I have a 50% cast chance, not too bad, and 12 points of magicka. So I'll put this as the Greater, greater Bone Walker 2.0. Go ahead and buy that. Now the second thing I'll do is make a stronger chameleon spell. So I'm gonna put this on self. I'll do it for, let's try 20 points for 15 seconds. And although this is a pretty short duration, this will still be very helpful when, you know, trying to get a critical hit at the start of a fight or if we're trying to like pick a lock or something. So this is gonna be very helpful as well. And we'll just call this chamel e un because I, I don't know, I don't, <laughs> I don't have an original idea right now, but we'll add that into our inventory as well. Now with our first wave of spells out of the way, I do wanna always remember to grab everything out of the Mage's Guild supply chest. Again, fortify willpower potions, standard restore magicka potions, as well as our Omsivi and Diviner Adventure scrolls. Very important at the beginning of the game when you're gonna be failing your spells a lot. When you get in tight spot, popping some fortify willpower just to increase your spell percentage a little bit really will be the difference between life and death at this point in the game. The early game of Morrowind, especially on this like stealth style character, is so, so fragile. You really have to be very careful. But when you get to the late game, when you get to the broken items like Amulet of Shadows and all these things, it really does get pretty out of hand. So it's a trade-off. Very squishy and frail in the early game, absolutely untouchable and one-shotting in the late game. And if you're playing a Nightblade Assassin character, well, you should probably know what you're getting yourself into. Now, the next spells that we want to buy are another couple of our staples. The first one being Mark on this side of the temple, and the second being Recall on this far side no, so. over here. And of course, we want to grab our own CV intervention as well, have that nice and easy and ready to cast. Having those teleportation spells are gonna be very, very important, again, for a Nightblade or Assassin style character who's trying to sneak into enemy lines, pull off an assassination, and then get out untouched. If you can't do that with invisibility, the only other way you're gonna do it is by teleporting from point B back to point A. Because <laughs> if you don't do that, you're gonna get murdered by the guards. And then, well, <laughs> you're not getting paid. And we all know why you are an assassin. 
Now with all our spells and Balmora out of the way, the last thing I want to mention here is the glory that waits in House Halalu here in Balmora. And if you watched my How to Thief video, then you know exactly what that is. Well, again, if you're an assassin, you're probably trying to do some sneaky things. And sneaky things often involves breaking and entering into locations. And that being the case, we want to speak to Neleno Dorvain because Neleno Dorvain is a restocking merchant for Masters Lockpicks and Masters Probes, both of which are very important because no matter how good your open spell is, even if you're consistently casting a level 100 open spell, you can't unlock a trap. So you will always want to have probes on you. Otherwise, your squishy 40 health character is going to get wiped out by just about every trap in the game. And of course, the lockpicks never hurt either because, well, what happens when you run out of Magicka? That's game over, all right? You have to reload the level. 47 is not getting paid. That's all I'm saying. All right, now for our final spells to finish setting up the build, we are going to head to Sadrath Mora, and that is also where we are going to be getting our first item as well. So let's hop over to Wolverine Hall and get this thing going. So to grab our final spells, we want to go down the stairs here to our wonderful, wonderful friends at the Imperial Shrine. Oh, if only they knew what we were doing with knowledge they're granting us here. <laughs> but we want to talk to Honest Atreus and then grab our good old Absorb Health or honestly any of the other Absorb spells here because these are wonderful debuffs for all of our enemies because not only are they injuring our enemies, they are buffing us up as well. And because we're a scrawny, you know, assassin style character, maybe absorb strength makes sense here. Maybe absorb endurance makes sense here. And of course, if you just want to be overpowered, well, absorb health never, never hurts. But I'm going to grab absorb health, absorb strength, and then also complete our trifecta of teleportation by picking up divine intervention because, you know, we need God on our side as well. The Holy Emperor Talos and all of the rest of the nine will guide our blade just as easily as the tribunal. And, you know, if you, well, if you know anything about Elder Scrolls lore, yeah, the, the gods aren't really, uh, you know, pacifists. I'll just say that. But with that out of the way, we want to come back upstairs, speak to Eniel, and then we will begin gathering all of the items for this build, all of the gear, all of the fun stuff that make how-to videos go freaking off the charts here. So, friendly reminder, if you don't want to see in-game loot and you just want to play the build, exit now. You've been warmed. Otherwise, let's go crazy. So I will start by traveling first to Vivek, and then once I'm in Vivek, I will head down to the docks and I will be heading to Ebenhart. So I will catch you over there. Once we have arrived at the docks of Ebenhart, we need to, whoa, ignore our freaking norded out orc here. That's a wonderful mashing of Tamrielic cultures there. What a well-traveled orc. Although you shouldn't think that he, he probably just killed the Nord and like ate him and then wore his armor or something, you know, or just orcish things, right? <laughs> but anyways, you want to head out to our little side road here and we're going to be making our way over towards this castle in the distance. Now, what we're going to be picking up here is a wonderful starter dagger. And this is an item that everybody should know where it is because it's so, so great on these light armor characters, these squishy characters early in the game. So we're going to head into the Ebonheart underground caves. And once inside, we are going to pop ourselves above the water here, brandish our silver freaking dagger, and, oh, uh, well, we got to stab some rats. Come on. Oh, yes. Feel my wrath, rats. One down. Come on, come on. Another stab, another puncture wound for you. Stuart Little is quaking in his boots. And, oh, that rat was diseased. Okay, I don't feel so bad anymore. Just calm down, Stuart. All right, he was diseased. We just put him out of his misery. But anyways, at this crossroads here in the cave, well, go ahead, store the silver dagger because you won't be using it again when you come back here and grab the glass jink blade a fan favorite weapon here for some of these OP starts. So let's go ahead, open our inventory, and we'll hover over and give this a look. So here we have a glass jink blade, chop seven to nine, slash seven to nine, thrust six to nine, with a value of 6,500 gold, and a paralyze for 10 seconds on touch 
wind strikes. Now, like I mentioned, I love this item for this assassin style class. The paralyze on the blade just fits so well with the idea of like a laced assassin's knife, a poison enchanted, because of course we can't put poisons on our blade in Morrowind without the help of mods, which is pretty unfortunate, but this enchantment gets us half of the way there. I mean, how many times in movies have we seen our hero immobilized by the paralyzing toxins of the assassin's blade? Well, you're about to see another one, because uh, you're the star of your own movie. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, item number one, but we're not stopping there because this is a how-to video and we don't stop until things get absolutely insane. So we're going to head down the dock again, and now we are going to talk to Navos Halan, and we are going to have Navos Halan take us up to Sadrath Mora again for an item that has never been shown on this channel before. So buckle up. Now, once we're in Sadrath Mora, make sure to pop on your water walking and then hit the old dusty trail over here going past Wolverine Hall because where we want to go is actually to this peninsula here, right about in the middle there. And if you've been a watcher of this channel, well, you know that whenever we have to go to one of these places that are far away across the, the barren seas of Vardenfell, well, there's not really a great way to do it other than, well, swimming there and dealing with all the slaughterfish or popping a water walking potion and, you know, just putting your horse blinders on, trying not to get distracted by all the really cool dungeons that you obviously want to explore while you're traveling. But I'm not going to subject you to the mind-numbing walk and absolute terror of the ocean that is about to become a fight with these slaughterfish until I get my water walking back on. So, so once I get on land, oh my god, stay away! <laughs> So now that I, I've gotten back on land, well, I will catch up with you a little bit closer to our tomb. All right, here we are with most of the ocean braved coming up on our peninsula here. And ladies and gentlemen, that right there, that is where we are headed. So let's go ahead and make our way down to the coast and hopefully not have to deal with any more freaking slaughterfish because my hands have been covered in blood. I look, it looks like a freaking Long John Silver's storeroom back there. I mean, the fish fillets that I have left would make Ronald McDonald blush. In fact, I should make them pay for, pay me a two for five freaking fillet of fish back there. I'd, I'd be a millionaire. But here we go. Oh, we got the calcium guardian out in front of the tomb. Okay, well, good thing we have paralysis because, well, calcium guardian, he's, he's in a bit of a bad way. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Okay, you know, well, you know, I'm an, I'm a Nightblade. All right, let me get behind him. All right now, I'm now I'm gonna sneak attack. There we go. <laughs> and oh, right with the last charge. Okay, that worked out perfectly. All right, so let's grab a couple rests here because I do want some charge on this weapon. Again, it is kind of our lifeline in the early stages of this build. Before our sneak gets high enough, our chameleon gets high enough. Again, we're not just gonna rush the Amulet of Shadows on every single build, but of course, you know, feel free to do that if you want to. I show you how to get it in my How to Thief video over there. But if you're not immediately breaking chameleon, you do need a gap that allows you to get to the point where you can be sneaky enough, and these paralysis weapons are going to be the best way to do it. But let's not get sidetracked too much because we have arrived at a Renum Ancestral Tomb and this has a really cool item that beautifully matches with our Nightblade playstyle. All right, once we're in, let's head down, pop open the door, and ladies and gentlemen, this is a quest giver, and she is actually looking for the item we are going to get. So I'm not going to talk to her here at the beginning or at the end of the quest uh, because I want to keep the item that we're going to get. I mean, sorry, I, I know it's your father's amulet, but <laughs> I'm an assassin. You think I'm worried about morals? No, no, no. I'm going to keep the amulet. I don't mean to use it to kill people because that's what assassins do. So here we have come to our first trap. Let's hit an F5 here, grab that master's probe that we got in Balmora, throw it on our character, and then smack that trap open on our first try. Look at that. The power of security, ladies and gentlemen. Now I'll put my glass jink blade back on. And then I'm going to want to go to the right here uh, and head this way. Oh, we have a ghost. Paralysis down. Okay, ghost down. Fantastic. All right, now this door is actually the one that the item is behind. But since we did not take a really crazy 
open spell at the beginning, which if you did, feel free to knock that sucker open. But otherwise, there is a key that we can find here. So let's go ahead and head after it. I mean, I'm an assassin. I want to wet my blade with a little more blood here before we end it, right? So oh, here we have a skeletal archer. Okay, let's hop in. Get the paralyzed down. There we go. Come on. And boom. Okay, there we go. All right, and then that key that I mentioned is going to be right here. It actually blends in really well with the floor, but that's it, a Renum burial key. So let's go ahead and throw that one in the inventory. You think your trickery could stop me, skeleton? Well, <laughs> I'll have you know I am Kevin James, international assassin, movie star. I cannot be stopped. I cannot be swayed. I am Kevin James, and I am inevitable. <laughs> You know, sometimes I sit here and wonder what my neighbors think. Like, I talk pretty loud. They could probably hear me. Anyways, back to our quest here. Now, here we have our lock level 60 door. But now that we have the key, we can pop that sucker right open. And then we'll just have one more ghost standing in the way. Oh, and we are out of charge. Okay, good thing. Our weapon still counts as magical, even though we do not have enchantments. And just maybe one more hit on the ghost here. And there we go, okay. Now with the final burial guardian out of the way, we're gonna wanna make our way over to this skeleton here. Now you will see here a really cool item as well, which is the Sword of Augustus, which is a two-handed long blade, chop one to 30, slash one to 25, with a drain agility on strike that honestly won't really do a whole lot but is kind of cool makes it harder for your opponent to hit you if you decide to use it but that is not why we're here we are here to search augustus for his amulet and ladies and gentlemen in here you can see augustus's amulet a value 240 amulet with a whole lot of things going on the first effect is a blind 25 to 50 percent for 30 seconds in two feet on target, followed by a silence for 30 seconds in two feet on target with a disintegrate armor one to three points for 30 seconds and a disintegrate weapon one to three points for 30 seconds in two feet on target as well. So again, going on that theme of debuffs, supporting our assassinations via magic, this amulet pairs perfectly with our Nightblade build, silencing our foes, stopping them from casting any spells, kind of going with that idea of the paralysis, you know, an enchanted blade leaving our opponents gagged and speechless. The blind making it harder for them to hit us, as well as some other debuffs destroying their weapons and armor as if we had some kind of corrosive element to our attacks. I mean, I just love the Augustus's amulet for this kind of character, having those thoughts in our mind as we are striking down our enemies. And don't let the value fool you. That amulet is actually way stronger than you would think. Now, remember how I said this amulet was a quest item? Well, if you get close enough to Santiana here, she will trigger a dialogue with you asking you to return her father's amulet. And again, we want to keep this to ourselves. Maybe by the time you make a replacement at the end game, you're just trying to 100% things, come on back and hand the amulet over to her. But I don't want to do that right now. I want to keep it and kill my bounty targets. So what I'm going to do instead is actually just um, CV intervention out of here, and we will move on to our last item, which is another one making its first appearance here on the channel. I'll see you in the next town. So here we've ended up in Malagmar, nice and far away, but thankfully we do have a Silt Strider port that we can use to get back to somewhere where, you know, normal people go. I mean, Malagmar, I love Ash and Rock as much as the next guy, uh, but you know, it's no Balmora, right? Oh, Ooh. nobody saw that. Sorry. Walked over here down the stairs, you know, the way I should when I have a health pool of a freaking naked mole rat. Well, then I'm going to head over to the Silt Strider driver and I'm going to travel over to Surin. And once I am in Surin, well, I'm going to hop right over the town wall here and I'm going to be trying to make my way just over here to the northeast. So it's going to be a little bit of a pain. You're probably going to have to cast Levitate or something, but we want to get over this mountain range right here. So do your best Skyrim and impression and scale that vertical wall however you need to. Come on, Kevin, up the mountain, up the mountain. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. Come on. 
Austin Powers could do this in his sleep. You're making you're making assassins look bad. Jeez, you gotta freaking lay off some of that New York pizza. You need to get back in your assassination shape, buddy. Come on. You know, I'm starting to think that that guy wasn't a real assassin in that movie. You know, something's telling me that. I don't know why, but I'm just getting that feeling. At least we found a nice and easy path over here just above the Daedric Ruin. So let's keep going the way that we intended. All right, here we are at a good landmark. Again, we are just over the mountain range beside Surin. You can see we haven't really gone that far at all, but this dungeon right here, Satoran, is a great marker because what we essentially want to do is just walk straight out across from it, and that will get us on the path that we need to be heading along. So I'm just gonna keep walking over here Pull out our nice paralysis dagger, get this baby revved up, and well, ladies and gentlemen, we are on the path to our final item here to set us up on how to be a Nightblade. Now as we're walking here, quick reminder that a lot of the skills that are good on a thief also apply to being a Nightblade. So if you want a refresher on how the sneak skill works, how sneak is calculated, which of course plays heavily into the Nightblade playstyle, be sure to go check out that How to Thief video as I do a whole breakdown on the skill over there. I didn't just want to, you know, remake that again. But if you'd like a refresher, be sure to check out that video. And with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, here we are at Kunarai the site of the final item for our Nightblade build. Let's go ahead and pop inside. Oh, and the fun starts immediately. We got a bandit here, okay? Get back over here, we gotta paralyze. Oh my god. So there's that small health pool we talked about. Uh, but now that we reloaded, let's let's go ahead, pull out our Augustus's amulet. Let's get a silence on this guy. Oh, they resisted, let's try it again. There we go, okay, they're silenced. They resisted the paralysis, but there we go. Okay, we got him down. Let's switch over to our probe. We got to get this trap open before that runs out. Okay, there we go. Again, we are not a warrior. We are trying to coerce our way to the item that we want. We're not going to beat these guys in the heavy armor up front here at the beginning of the game. So let's go, go, go. Run, run, run. Use our agility. Use our speed. Oh, we've run out of charge. Oh, this is gonna be close. Okay, go, go, go. The item we want is just up here. Come on, assassin, don't fail, don't fail. And there it is. Ladies and gentlemen, the devil's longbow. Let's grab it off the top rope and then come on. Oh, and we're out of there. Run, run, run. Shut the door behind us. <laughs> <laughs> and we're out of here like a shadow in the night. <laughs> Look at that. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> See that? that? Ladies and gentlemen, that right there, that is the fun of playing these really agile, sneaky characters, having to work your way around a situation, using your debuffs, using your paralyze and the silence, quickly switching over to a probe to get through a trap that would probably knock your health bar out in one hit. This is the fun of trying out different play styles like this. Now, just imagine, you know, that was like a Marag Tong writ, like you just killed someone and you're trying to escape. That's what makes being an assassin so freaking cool. You gotta use your brain instead of your brawn because the brawn is just so easy to use in Morrowind sometimes. We often forget everything else. But like I mentioned, this was another item crucial for the build. And ladies and gentlemen, that is our marksman item, the Devil Long Bow. Value 265 with a cast when used ability of Lightning Shield, 1 to 10 points for 10 seconds on self, but also a Bound Long Bow for 60 seconds on self which when paired with our silver arrows will be a wonderful source of repeatable heavy damage early on in the game for those far away critical strike kills that all of us want to get. Because as a reminder folks, all of our bound weapons, bound items, bound spells, these all have the same exact stats as their Daedric equivalent. So our devil longbow here really is just a Daedric longbow. And at level one too, that never hurts. So here we are. We have our marksman damage. We have an awesome supporting debuff item to use when we find ourselves in a tight situation when trying to complete a contract. And we have a short blade that allows us to not only be effective and deal some damage, but also be tactical and get us out of tight situations when we need it. That sounds like we're wonderfully on our way to being one of Morrowind's deadliest assassins. But 
In order to be an assassin, we must join the assassins. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to pop a divine intervention, and because it is a bit obscure, I'll be showing you how to join the Maragtong and get on your way. So our divine intervention took us to Pelagiad. Now we need to take our own CV, which will get us exactly where we want to go, which is to Vivek. So one second here, let's get our own CV intervention down. Here we are, and we are now going to want to make our way to the Arena Canton of Vivek, because the assassins, of course, locate themselves as close to death as possible. And where is death more prevalent in Marwind than, well, the Vex Arena? I mean, that's literally recreational death. That, that is the highest form of ritual killing here, I'd say. It's not done silently. It's not done in the shadows. And in fact, that's probably why it's the best cover for the actual freaking assassins to have. Never really thought about that, but, you know, makes total sense. But here we are in the Arena Canton. The Foreign Canton is actually right over there. And then, as you can see, we just followed a straight path back from the temple all the way down. The arena is just off to the side. If you're looking at Vivek, it is here just, you know, off to the side of the Foreign Quarter, just a couple bridges away. Not too bad to get to. But what we want to do once we're here is head up to the Arena Wasteworks. So let's go ahead up. And then once we are in the Wasteworks, we need to come over here, go straight across, and then that right there, that is the banner that we need to watch out for. And this is how you know you're on the right path. So this is the Arena Fighters Training Banner. And then we want to come to this door to the Canal Works, not the other side because they do lead to two separate cells. So we'll head down here. And then once we're down, we're gonna go down the stairs, keep walking, keep walking. And then here you'll find the Vivek Arena Storage. Pop in again. Again, like I said, these assassins, they like to stay out of the limelight. So they are way back in the back of beyond. But now we'll pop this open, get our Jink Blade back out to deal with this freaking rat. Okay, there we go. And we'll keep walking again. Here we have a lock level 25 trapped wooden door. So let's get our probe back on. Pop this guy open. Okay, there we go. Now let's deal with the lock. Put our lock pick on. Now patience is gonna be <laughs> gonna be the virtue here with our security skill of five. You know, we could cast a, a Dency's open door, but actually that wasn't too bad. Okay. Let me grab my jink blade again. We got another rat over here. Come on. Alright, rat down, and then here you have it. The secret passage to the assassin's lair. The trapdoor to Vivek Arena hidden area with a lock level 50. Now let's go over to that open door spell that we got earlier on and then try and get this sucker down. We may have to do some magicka restoration here. Not the most adept spell caster just yet, but we're not here to cast spells. We're here to kill people. Okay, and there we go. Trap door opened. Let's go ahead and pop inside and then I'll limit the cuts here because actually getting to the guy that you need to get to in order to join the guild is a little confusing. So let's walk straight forward, go up the stairs here. You're going to want to then hang a left and then turn by the orc with the massive Iron Man thing on his heart. You're then gonna to wanna to take another left, another right, go up the stairs past all these beds, across the pedestrian bridge that they have inside. This is a massive place. And then sure enough, here we go, Eno Halalu, the head of the Marag Tong. And now, ladies and gentlemen, all you need to do, click him, click join the Marag Tong, and you will be given your first writ and take your first life. So let's click, yes, I will join, and the rest is up to you. Welcome to the folds of the Marag Tong. I have helped pave your path, but your descent into darkness must now be done alone. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. I know this was one that people were really looking forward to. If there are any other builds, video ideas, artifacts that you want to see on the channel, I do check the comments. Be sure to drop them below. I will add them to my list, and I promise we'll get there eventually. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, I will catch you on the next one.